Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. I'm just kidding. I can totally see you. And frankly, you should be ashamed of yourself, Jason. Look, I don't know if your name is Jason, but it was worth it to f*** with all the Jasons watching. Hello and welcome to possibly the most mother comprehensive guide to Hunt Showdown for new players ever conceived. That part is, of course, a lie, but I'm going to do my best regardless. So, if you're not a new player, this probably won't be of much interest to you, but I'd highly encourage you to watch this anyway, because you might just learn something you didn't know. Or, if you did know it, maybe you'll learn a different perspective and a way of thinking. Either way, give me the like, you selfish <laughs> So this is most likely going to be a long, long video. But that's okay, because if you're a new player, you got a lot to learn, and I'm going to do my best to run you through it. My name is Alan, I go by Geef, I'm here to teach you things, so let's get to it. Before I begin, I want to mention that I am by no means the best player in the game. I make mistakes, just like everyone else, and I promise you that if there is a red barrel trap on the map, I'm probably going to walk into it because I don't look down. The bees are on them. Uh... Why? Well, that's because my head is too busy looking at the sky, or if you ask my ex, my own ass. So with that disclaimer out of the way it's time to explain leveling to you because it's one of the most common things I'm asked. In Hunt, your playable character, known as a hunter, has a goal. To go into the map, find clue to locate the boss, Murder it and banish it. Come play. Come play. See. Oh yes. Oh yeah, brother bear. That is, that is. Oh. Then pick up the bounty and extract the map. This in turn gives you experience and would allow you to progress your hunter from rank 1 to the maximum of rank 50. Separate to this, you have your overall account rank, known as your bloodline. That goes from level 1 to 100. With the option to prestige upon reaching max rank. Hitting the prestige button works like most other games with a similar mechanic like Call of Duty, etc. And this will cause you to have a fresh loadout, as if you'd start in the game again and it, you will gain a prestige rank in the process. And prestige ranks go from 1 to 100 also. A thing of note though, when you prestige, you keep the unlocks of any legendary weapons slash hunters that you purchased prior, but more on this later. As you level up and hunt, you will unlock weapons, consumables, throwables, and tools to use in your games as well as trade points. And we'll get to those, don't worry, this is going to take a while, to spend on your hunter. Generally, the more powerful weapons are locked behind later ranks, with weapons such as the Nitro Express and the Dolch 96 being rank 68 and upwards, but that doesn't mean that weapons that come before it are bad. As of patch 1.5, every weapon in Hunt I would consider to be good. And I wanted to spell something right now. For those of you that come in hoping to find the, the one-trick best weapon, there is no singular best weapon in Hunt. Whatever weapon you are best with, is the best weapon. Sure, the Mosin and LaBelle are very, very powerful long rifles, but you really might have the leading down on that 400 meter per second wind field, and as a result, you'll just destroy people. But again, more on that later. So, back on the topic of leveling. 
When you do basically anything in Hunt, you will gain experience for it. Even something as simple as leaving the map via extracting safely will reward you with experience. Smaller actions will reward you small amounts, with objectives such as killing the bounty and extracting with it rewarding high amounts of experience compared to leaving early and getting low amounts. If your hunter leaves the map either by extracting or dying, you'll be treated to a tally screen showing the culmination of all your work and the experience rewarded for it. If you leave the map via dying and only dying, you will receive half the experience for everything you've done, meaning that even if you suck at the game, and even if you keep getting stomped, and trust me, you will as you start out, you will still progress forward, albeit very slowly. So experience is split between your hunter and your bloodline. Remember, bloodline is your overall 1 to 100. So some of that goes to your hunter, and some of that goes to your bloodline or overall rank. If your hunter is level 25 and above, you gain the option to retire your hunter, which causes you to gain 100 experience for every level that hunter was. So if you retire level 25, you'll get 2,500 experience. If you retire level 50, you get 5,000. And this is where the risk slash reward of Hunt's core leveling loop really hooks you in. So you might want to retire your level 25 for that 2,500 experience. But if you can stay alive till 50, then you'll receive double that experience. There is more. If your hunter is level 50, any and all experience gained upon leaving the match no longer goes to your hunter, because why would it? They're max rank. Instead, any experience you gain with a level 50, all of it goes to your bloodline. All of it. So, if you want to level as fast as humanly possible, you need to risk that level 50 and just crush games with it. If you die, well, that's 5,000 experience you miss out on because you could have retired that hunter. But if you live, that's definitely more than 5,000 that goes directly to your bloodline. So, in short, if you're not confident in running a 50 or you just don't care how fast you level, don't be afraid to retire at level 25 for those free extra ranks. You might just unlock something that will help you do better. Speaking of unlocks, however, certain consumables are locked behind experience gained through using them directly, while some are locked behind just using them in general. For example, if you want to unlock a weapon variant such as a spark sniper, well then you need to gain experience with the default sparks by killing things with it, either by meleeing or shooting. As long as the weapon deals a killing blow, you'll gain experience. You'll gain small experience for killing things like grunt and AI, and you'll gain a lot more experience by killing bigger targets such as, you know, bounties, one of the bosses. So, if you want to unlock the big vitality shots, for example, which will heal you to full, well you need to unlock the weak stamina shots. This is achieved by using 5 healing shots of any kind. And then you need a further 10 healing shots of any kind to unlock the big vitalities. Now that might, I get it, that sounds like a lot to keep track of. Uh, but thankfully, what you need to do to unlock each particular item is very, very easy to track via the store page and the book of weapons, which details the percentage towards completion. So again, in short, using things causes you to gain experience with them. More experience means more unlocks for it. And the fastest but least risk adverse way to level is by running a 50 and not dying. Sounds complex, I know, but that's basically as simple as I can put it. So beforehand, I touched on legendaries very briefly, and this feels like a good time to explain them. So legendary items, hunters are purely cosmetic. Okay, big bold sign here. Okay, big bold sign. Legendaries are purely cosmetic. They serve no extra purpose other than making you look uh, and your weapons look cool, okay? So I'm sure that some of you listening have either played League of Legends or, or, or CSGO, and you could argue that uh, the black coat legendary skin like makes you harder to see on night maps, but you know there's tier 3 hunter skins that are just as hard, if not harder to spot, so that kind of renders that argument invalid. Uh, if you've played League or CSGO, like I said, it's a similar concept, right? They're just skins, they're just cosmetics, they don't make you better, they just show how you know big of a f EP you have, yeah? That's the gist, general gist of it. Uh, so, weapon and hunter skins can be purchased with the currency known as blood bonds, which uh, can be bought with real life dollars if you're so inclined. However, blood bonds are also rewarded to you for completing contracts, uh, completing unlocks in the book of weapons and the monstrum, uh, daily and weekly rewards, and lastly, can just be found in the game world through uh, cash registers and satchels of blood bonds. Uh, so blood bonds have a variety of uses as well outside of those purchases or skins, such as you can respec your hunter's health bars, uh, you can remove traits so you can make room to replace them with others, and you can clean your weapons, which is an act that just removes the dirt and grime on your weapon. 
uh, which every time you get downed in game, your weapon gets filthy. It gets much, much like your mum. It gets filthy when it goes on its back. Okay, that's generally how it works. But again, this is purely cosmetic, right? It's purely cosmetic. Again, having dirt on your weapon doesn't affect the performance in any way. So don't look at it and be like, oh, it's going to jam. It's not going to jam. It's, it's not, okay? It's not going to do a thing. It's not going to do a thing. Your filthy dolch versus a non-filthy dolch are both going to be disgusting in their usage, but it's not going to affect the weapon, yeah? Uh, so legendary hunters differ from your regular recruitable tier 1 through 3 hunters by not coming equipped with any weapons. So when you recruit a hunter uh, through the store page, normally it comes with weapons, consumables, stuff like that, and maybe a few traits, maybe. Uh, legendary hunters don't come with any weapons. They ha do, however, always come with three traits, and they always cost $333. So once you've bought a legendary hunter or weapon, you own it for good. Yeah, it's yours. You do not need to purchase it with blood bonds for a second time. If you unlock a legendary weapon skin, you'll receive a copy of it to be used right there and then. But let's just say you die and you lose that weapon, you'll still need to reach the required rank uh, to unlock and all the unlock criteria to be able to purchase it with your hunt dollars. So for example, if you buy the legendary Nitro skin, like Sinus Prayer or the Black Mamba, for example, you will get that Nitro right there and then on the spot. However, if you die and you lose that Nitro, you'll have to wait to get to like level, I think it's like 88 or 87. I think it's 87 uh, before you can purchase it again with in-game money, right? Blood Bond items, legendary items, one-time purchase. So don't sweat it. So all you need to know, summing up legendaries, are that they're just cosmetic, and that's it. They're the shiny version of an existing item, and they're the business model of Hunt outside of game sales. Also, the legendary skin Spring Chicken was generously created in honor of myself by Crytek. Though no newcomer to the uh, American Hunter Association, the hunter who bore this lightning blessed label channeled the energy of a freshly hatched spr spring storm. They say lightning never strikes twice, and in this case, it's because it never needs, needs to. Very nice. So, very much congrats to Geek. So, if you see anyone with the spring chicken, please be sure to burn them so as to make them a fried chicken. <laughs> Thank you. Speaking of burning, however, now seems like a good time, oh boy, to talk about health bars and everyone's favorite game mechanic, fire. Fire, what is this? So, before I talk about the wonder that is fire, I need to talk about how health bars work in Hunt so I can pivot into it. Because it's a kind of a confusing topic. Hunters all start with a maximum of 150 health. This is split between denominations of 25 and 50. These denominations of 25 and 50 health are represented by small or large red bars, or bricks of health, as they're commonly referred to. So when you're damaged, you lose health from those bars. If the bar is depleted, well then you need to find healing to replenish it. If the bar is damaged but not depleted, then the health will regenerate on its own after a few short seconds without further damage to yourself. If you die and get revived by a teammate, then the topmost bar will be burned off and grayed out completely. A burned off bar cannot be recovered through traditional healing items and can only be restored by one of two ways. You either spend some of your trait points to recover your health back upon safely exiting the map, or by being part of the team that performs the banish on one of the game's many bosses, which will return all of your bars, burned off or otherwise. Banishing a boss is a full heal, complete full heal. So, if you're a full health 150 hunter, and your health configuration is big, big, small, small, right? As in 250 bars, two small bars, and then you die and you get revived, then your hunter's max health will now be 125. If you die again, it'll be 100. You die again, it'll be 50. You die again, well then you're just f***ing at the game, but you're dead for good, right? Stop farming your team, right? You're dead for good then. Um, your health bar configuration always has a 50, 50 brick at the base, always. But the rest of your health bars up to your discretion. So these bars can be shuffled around and respect using your blood bonds, and there actually is a case for running four small bars 
because you can technically be revived more often, but there is also a case for running three big bars because getting hit partially means the bar won't deplete and thus can safely be regenerated and that saves you on healing items. So, I know what you're thinking, but Alan, what does this have to do with fire? What is, talk about fire. Okay, don't worry, I'm getting to it, right? Now that I've prefaced the hell system. So, being set on fire slowly causes your bars to burn off, starting from the top and then trickling slowly to the bottom. So, as a result, if you're on fire, you'll want to put this out as soon as possible, so as not to lose some of your max health, uh, you know, H HP, health, whatever, whatever you want to call it. However, if you die, your character model still exists. So, as such, you're kind of just waiting to be revived body is able to be burned. So, throwing a lantern or a firebomb or creating a flammable source and having it touch your body will slowly cause you to burn out over time. So your team is able to put this fire out by preventing you from dying properly. They just walk up and interact with your body. Uh, but a common tactic in Hunt is to kill an enemy player and then set fire to them. This puts the enemy's teammates on a clock, right? They have to they have to extinguish that fire, otherwise your bars will be burned off and you'll be dead for good. Essentially, burning a body is like securing a kill in like uh, PUBG or Apex. The person is down, but they're not out of the game officially. However, their body can't move because you know, you're laying on your back. Um, burning a body takes time, and it's an, it's an assured way to make sure the player isn't getting back up. There are ways to delay that uh, through traits like self skin and whatnot, but again, more on traits later. This is a very long video. Some people frown on burning, right? And trust me, <laughs> trust me, when you get instantly burned enough after dying, you'll be pissed off as well. However, it's a game mechanic that's intended to be used, and as such, you don't need to be physically put out by a teammate for the burn to stop, right? So don't, don't stress too much. Everyone's going to burn people. I hate to be that guy that says just join the burn, but I mean, everyone else is going to do it. It's really up to your discretion. If you want more kills, you can let the let them be revived and kill them again. Pad your stats if that's how you want to play it, right? Either burn them out or don't be honorable or don't consider it honor or not. It, it doesn't matter, right? You're in it to win it, baby. At least that's my stance on it. So. Again, your teammates can physically put out the burn, uh, so can tools such as choke bombs that extinguish all flammable sources within the given choke cloud. Also, quick note, uh, a liquid firebomb cannot, absolutely cannot, set players who die under the water on fire. Now you might think so, oh I died in water, I'm safe. Not so, doesn't work like that. Uh, if you die in the water, you can't be burned, but you can still be poison bombed, and how that happens is a player stands on your body and then another player throws a poison bomb onto that player that hits them it'll poison them briefly but the cloud will linger over over you right so dying in the water you're still not safe right you can't be burned out that's true but people can still grief you that way um but however dying in water is mostly pretty safe so that's a plus so the fire will spread on top of the water with a liquid fire bomb but it won't reach the hunter under it right Liquid fire bombs only just set water on top on fire. Don't be fooled by the name. Okay? Okay. That was a lot, wasn't it? Oh, God, that was a lot. So, we good? Good. So, I'm glad we're good because I'm not even remotely f done with the status effects like fire. Uh, and just, so just take a deep breath. Okay? Because I'm going to explain them even further. Oh, he's a god. I'm not, I'm not in trouble. Oh, he had a poison hand cross. Oh, Jesus. No, not like this. Not like this. <laughs> I hit my own Constantine. <laughs> we can't end like that. We can't end like that. We can't end like this. <laughs> like this. <laughs> so there are three, uh, well, technically four status effects that are able to afflict your hunter. These are in no particular order, right? I'm just rattling them off. There's fire, bleeding, poison, and a relatively new one, choking. Whilst the first three are deadly, choking is not, unless it's your girlfriend. But that doesn't make it any less annoying or potentially hazardous, right? It's still going to be an annoying effect. Uh, fire, we've already covered, so that's good, but you can set your, you can find uh, yourself set on fire from, you know, fire. Burning lanterns, uh, broken lanterns, firebombs that are thrown, AI grunts that have a flaming torch, and they hit you with it. 
uh, and even in 1.5 and onwards, incendiary ammo shot at you from other hunters. Right? Uh, immolators that explode. There's a lot of there's a lot of things. Uh, the butcher, one of the bosses. There's a lot of things that can set you on fire. The other deadly status effect, uh, bleed and poison, they can be applied in similar ways. So AI can apply it, uh, poison through things like Doctor Grunts. They drop a med kit when they're killed. By the way, keep an eye out for that. Uh, hives who will swarm you with bees. You want to kill that? Sending bees. What? Oh God! The bees! Not the bees! Help me, Alan! <laughs> I'm covered in f***ing bees! Alan! <laughs> okay, it's dead. I'm... <laughs> I'm fine. Leeches who will spit poison at you. Uh, and poison ammo shot at you by hunters. Uh, poison will not cause your health to drain constantly unless you stand in it, so it's a plus. But instead, it will change the color of your screen to have this lovely border of green around it. And whilst poisoned, you cannot be healed under any circumstance and your health bars do not regenerate. So your health is essentially just paused at the time that you get poisoned. So furthermore, you also have this sound effect, which makes it really hard to hear. Uh, here it is. So, unlike bleeding uh, and fire, you are unable to simply hold a button and remove poison. You just have to wait it out. The severity of the poison affliction denotes the amount of time that your screen looks distorted and weird, but you are able to avoid poison entirely by consuming an antidote shot. And these are largely for newer players, so you're in luck, don't worry. But as you get better in the game, poison becomes less and less of a threat and just more of an inconvenience. So, don't worry. Uh, next up, we have bleeding. This can be applied through things such as stepping on bear traps, concertina wire, hellhounds, uh, ammo that applies bleed by players, frag bombs that are thrown by players, AI hitting you like grunts with knives, and even some of the bosses, like the assassin. Bleeding, much like the other two, comes in flavors of intensity from light to medium and then severe. Whilst you're bleeding, your health will slowly decrease over time, and the intensity of the bleeding effect applied denotes how fast your health drains but also how long it takes to remove the effect by holding the assigned button. So a severe bleed takes longer to remove and will drain your health faster. Light bleed, not so much. So bleeding is pretty annoying, but it doesn't really affect your ability to heal uh, like poison does. And it doesn't affect your overall health like fire does. If you're bleeding and you get a vit shot in you and you go to full health, that bleeding will stop completely. In fact, you get any healing in you and the bleeding will stop. So it's a lot easier to remove. It's, it is annoying though, right? It is really annoying. Don't underestimate it. Uh, and finally, we have the latest and the last status effect, Rejoice! It will not kill you directly, as it doesn't injure your hunter in any way, but it's no less annoying, and that is choking. Choking at the time of writing this guide can only be applied from choke bombs, uh, and those are a tool that is thrown by hunters to choke out fire and poison sources. So if something, or someone, including down hunters, uh, are on fire or have poison on them, then throwing a choke bomb will produce a cloud after a few seconds that will completely disperse all fire, all flammable effects, and all poison. Uh, fun fact though, this also includes any fire sources tossed into the cloud. So if you throw a firebomb into a choke bomb cloud, the firebomb is nullified. If you throw a dynamite stick into a choke cloud, the dynamite gets snuffed out when it enters the cloud. Uh, however, that's except a wax dynamite stick, because a wax dynamite stick is, is completely covered. A wax dynamite stick can go underwater and explode, and a wax dynamite can also go through choke bombs. I actually learned that wax dynamite go through choke bombs uh, maybe about 30 hours ago. <laughs> so, yeah, I learned something new. I've got like 2,000 hours in the game. So, yeah, wax dynamite goes through choke bombs. Uh, remember that. So, touching this cloud, however, the, the choking cloud, will cause your hunter to cough violently whilst you just remain in the cloud. And for many seconds after leaving it, your hunter will just have a coughing fit, right? <coughs> we all know that person, pack a day smoker, Winnie Blues, you know, lung, yeah, that's basically how you're gonna sound. So this coughing is very loud and it will give away your position. So that's one thing that's pretty shitty about it. Like, you're not injured, but you're constantly coughing. And people can hear you coughing and lung up. However, since you're coughing, it also makes aiming down the side of your gun flinch and flicker, 
due to the violent fit your hunter is currently undertaking. And there is no way at all to, much like poison, uh, there is no way to remove this effect any faster. Actually, that's not true. Poison has a trait. But with choking, there's no way to remove it any faster. You just have to wait it out. So choke bomb clouds aren't just effective at removing those effects on the ground. If you think outside the box, they're really just brilliant to deny enemy position rotations because you can step into the cloud will give away their position as well as dynamites being thrown through specific choke points. So if you want no one to throw a dynamite through a specific choke point, put a choke bomb there. If you want no one to rotate around and like flank you, like in a, in a compound or a building, put a choke bomb there, right? Like they have uses outside of just extinguishing fires. Oh, what a list. Oh, goodness, doesn't that just sounds like information overload, right? I mean, I get it. I mean, I get it. I mean, if you want, I'm going to have a sip of coffee. That's good. We can all just sit up and maybe take a stretch, get something to drink. Maybe just relax. Well, you can sit back down, mother because we have so much left to cover. Weapons. Oh, baby. This is the meat and potatoes of Hunt. This is, the, this is the core of Hunt Showdown. And with an absolute smattering of weapons to choose from, you really want to find the weapon that's right for you. I said at the start that there is no best weapon. It really is what the weapon you're best with. And that's true. And I'm going to elaborate on that now. So here we go. <sighs> Every weapon has its own advantages and disadvantages. It's got its own reload speed, its own rate of fire its own sway, all of that, but most importantly, it has its own muzzle velocity and effective range. Remember those two things because those are key to every weapon in Hunt. They probably affect weapons in Hunt more than anything else, more than ammo capacity, more than anything. It's muzzle velocity and effective range. So, simply put, muzzle velocity is how fast the bullet will travel, and effective range is how far out your bullet is capable of one-shotting someone in the head. So in Hunt, all headshots are one shots within that effective range. So if a gun says its effective range is 100 meters, it means up to 100 meters. If you shoot someone in the head, they will die with one bullet. If you shoot someone at 105 meters and the effective range is 100 meters, they will not die. So if you hit someone in the head outside of the effective range, you will hear a different noise. Uh, so killing someone or hitting anything in the head has this beautiful, just this beautiful squishy headshot noise. Oh, that's the stuff. And if you hit someone in the head outside of the weapon's effective range, you'll hear a slightly different noise. This is uh, generally referred to in the community as a soft headshot, meaning you definitely hit them in the head, but they aren't dead because the weapon you're using isn't that powerful of one-shotting someone at that distance. So the range that you're capable of headshotting someone, as well as how far to lead for a one-shot kill, is dictated by the ammo uh, or the weapon that you're using. There are four different types of ammunition in Hunt Showdown. Those are compact, medium, long, and custom. Uh, used to be known as special, but now it's custom. So compact ammo has more damage drop off over range than long ammo, but travels the slowest. Uh, but generally reloads faster and has more ammo capacity. Generally, again, this is not a hard and fast rule, but general rule of thumb. Uh, long ammo retains its high damage over long range and it travels the fastest. It penetrates more surfaces and it does so easier than compact ammo. However, the reload times are usually slower and ammo resupply amount is less. Uh, finally, medium. Medium is a fantastic way to describe medium ammo as it fits snugly somewhere between the two. It's got decent drop off, but not huge. Okay penetration, but not great. Uh, okay bullet velocity, but nothing incredible with a reload speed that is better than long, but not as fast as compact. It's generally how it works. There's not many medium ammo guns in the game. 
I'm trying to think of how many there are off the top of my head. And I want to say there's three. Springfield, Vettely, Pax Pistol. I think that's it. There might be one more. But off the top of my head, that's the three. The Vettely, the Pax, and the Springy. They're the medium ammo guns. Oh, I promise there's like a fourth and I'm missing it. Ah, whatever. If I randomly shout out in the middle of the video what the gun name is, yeah, you'll know. I'm sure there's someone in the comments right now that's like, No, Alan, it's this. It's this gun. I can't believe you're missing this gun. I can't believe you're missing it. Well, that's that's all I can think of. The Pax, the Springfield, and the Vettely. Yep. Yep, good. Okay, I think I'm good. Anyway, moving on. Uh, finally, we have custom ammo. Previously known as special ammo, but now it's just all under the custom umbrella. Uh, as of patch 1.5. So, oh boy. Uh, custom ammo includes all ammo variants, such as slugs, fletchet, incendiary, and poison, but also ammo for the crossbow, nitro express, and the dolch 96 and its variants. Uh, unlike regular ammo, however... Oh, the centennial! Yes, I knew there was a new gun. There, I... I knew it! There's a new windfield. The new windfield is medium ammo. The centennial... It was, I knew it. There was, I'm like, this is a new weapon in 1.5? Yeah. The Centennial, oh, I can't believe I almost forgot that. The Centennial, the Vettely, the Pax, and the Springfield are the medium ammo guns. There's only four of them. There we go. Now we're good. As I was, special ammo are things like the crossbow, or sorry, custom ammo for the crossbow, the nitro, and the Dolch 96 and its variants. And unlike regular ammo types, custom ammo can only be replenished from those purple boxes that are definitely not uwu boxes, okay? Definitely not uwu boxes. Ooh woo. Ooh we'll woo. Ooh uh, woo. Uh, speaking of ammo boxes, uh, they can be found all around the map, completely scattered all around the map. However, they are guaranteed to be found at supply carts. Uh, like I said, the ammo can be scattered around compounds, but a hundred percent chance to spawn at a supply cart. Uh, supply carts look like well, uh, a supply cart, I guess, on the map. They look like a cart. Open your map, press tab. There's a or, or whatever the binding is on console and you can see the carts uh those carts are guaranteed always 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 to contain a few things which are a toolbox resupply which is like an orange toolbox uh three ammo boxes one custom ammo box which is the uwu boxes and three med kits also a lantern and you can use that to burn players if you're in a pinch and you're feeling especially spicy but there isn't one best weapon in hunt there isn't a best weapon in hunt right so with all those ammo types listed there's no real best weapon except maybe the dolch but whatever so really all you need to do is you find out what works for you and you just go from there so learn how fast each gun's muzzle velocity is so you know how far to lead your target learn roughly how far each distance is you're shooting and you will go a long way oh speaking of weapons hunt showdown has a total f awesome mechanic integrated into its store which is surprising that i truly truly wish more games would do and like everything so far before i touch on that i need to tell you the importance of sound in hunt showdown see the important thing to learn in hunt and something you'll come to realize pretty early on is that hunt's sound and audio is just well it's it's just it's just incredible i mean just have a listen So Hunt uses a sound process called uh, binaural audio, which basically means the sound will come through each individual ear depending on the direction you're facing, and uh, sound is uh, channeled and programmed through each individual ear. And this might sound pretty par for the course, but it's actually pretty rare in games because of how hard it is to pull off correctly. Uh, when it's done right, it can be a 
immersive experience. And it's, it's beautiful. Uh, games that use it to good effect, for example, would be uh, Hellblades, Newest Sacrifice. But trust me, you play some Hunt and then you go and try play, I don't know, Warzone. The sound differences are night and day with Hunt. Hunt just spoils you for audio. Trying to play something else, it's just not the same. So everything, everything that you perform in Hunt, every action that has an animation, like jumping, pulling out your knife, all of that, it makes noise. So you pull your knife out, makes noise. Reloading, makes noise. Swapping weapons, makes noise. Jumping, makes noise. Right? Anything, there's an animation attached to it, it makes noise. Running, noise. Crouch walking, noise. Uh, you'll make more noise sprinting than you do crouch walking, but even whilst you're crouch walking, you still make some noise. And even if you're totally and completely still, even if you're silently just sitting there, not moving, if someone is close enough to you, they can hear you breathing. Okay? That's how just f***ing good the sound is. The amount of hunters I have killed because I have heard them breathing on the other side of the wall, and then I just shotgun the wall. Ugh. Mm. So, now that you know how important sound is, you're probably wondering, but Alan, how does that relate to the store? Well, in the store, you can select any weapon in the game, click 3D view, and then fire it. And this sounds cool, but like what you can also do is scroll outwards, which shows you at a distance what each weapon you're firing will sound like, which is so freaking cool. Uh, this is super important though because gunshots can be heard all the way across the map depending on the weapon of course and knowing what weapon someone is firing and how far away they are will give you information on what you're up against so new player you just heard a shotgun go off in the distance are you able to identify that that's a romero shotgun you are you know it's a romero because of the sound it makes well that's fantastic right because now you know that there's a player at that particular compound in that particular area who has a very strong close range weapon but only with one shot before reloading because you know it's a Romero so immediately that tells you okay how do I play this at range like do I do I do I stay at range and shoot them because I have a longer gun than they do or do I risk it do I get up close in their face and I hope they miss or I bait the shot out and then I kill them right if you really want to take it seriously then you can learn what every weapon in the game sounds like and that is a skill that you will pick up the more that you play it and personally it took me some considerable time However, I'm comfortably now, only now, am I comfortably able to tell you what gun is being fired, uh, how far away it's being fired from, and I know how to address the situation when I get to it. So, 
Speaking of sound, uh, the enemy AI will make different noises when alerted, and it can be heard from different distances depending on the enemy. The biggest tip that I can give a new player is to not think of the AI as a threat that will kill you, but instead think of them as a glorified sound trap. I see a lot of new players go, oh god, it's a zombie, oh god, I'm so scared. Doesn't matter. Just fucking stab it, okay? Just stab it. Everything is designed to make noise in Hunt. Everything is designed to give your position away in some manner. Crows are designed to be obnoxious little shits and in, in, in annoying spots that when startled, they'll fly away in the air and they'll make a loud noise. Once again, giving your position away, right? <laughs> Hellhounds make a loud howling when they spot a player before approaching. Hives will make a loud shrieking noise before spitting bees at you. Basic grunts will make a slight gurgling sound before running towards your position. And even if they don't know who you are and you've semi-alerted them, they'll kind of path towards you and investigate the area, right? The AI is pretty smart. The AI is also designed not necessarily to kill you, although it will definitely try, but the AI is designed to get you to make noise either by stabbing it or preferably by shooting it, thereby attracting players, thereby getting you into a fight. Yeah? So you combo that with the fact that all players are capable of dying in one hit, everything makes noise to try and draw their attention to you in that area, and I hope you're beginning to see the tense experience that Hunt is designed to be. So as you play more and more, this tense situation will wear off. But even now, as I sit on my Prestige 100 with over 2,000 hours, I still get tense in certain moments. Particularly when my teammates are dead and I have to swap my tactics for the sick clutch plays. I'm dead here, probably. Maybe, maybe. Oh my god. This cross is going to kill me, probably. I can't. <laughs> what the heck? So this is where your particular loadout comes into play. You can take in a more uh, silence loadout and blissfully cruise around the bayou if you want, but you'll lack firepower versus other hunters. Or you can go in guns blazing and let the whole map know where you're there and deliberately try to pick a fight. After all, sound doesn't matter if everyone able to hear it is taking a dirt nap courtesy of you. So in hunt, speed, is king and you want to move as fast as humanly possible to secure bounty kills before other players because that's experience but you also want to move as slow as necessary to make sure you get the jump on other players so knowing when to make noise and when to get you know all solid snake is the difference between a good hunter and a great one and thankfully this is not something that comes with just playing the game right you might think that that takes practice not necessarily some people are just tactical geniuses innately, and they know exactly when to throw caution to the wind, and they know exactly when to be the most silent hunter of all the hunters in all the bayou, and sometimes they know just when to go balls deep and just kill everything, right? Every so People will surprise you. But keep in mind, though, crouch walking around the map is likely to get you killed very quickly. As a slow, low, basically stationary target, isn't very hard to hit. With that being said... What does your typical game of Hunt loadout look like? Well, that's entirely up to you and your playstyle. However, there are some things I would absolutely recommend you bring in absolutely always. They are as follows. You want to bring in a knife 
so you can easily dispatch AI or players if you feel the need. This will deal with all varieties of AI exceptionally well, minus immolators and meatheads, which you should absolutely avoid as a new player. Uh, dusters to deal with those pesky immolators. Immolators are an, uh, an AI enemy that when you pierce its skin, right, when you pierce its skin, it will explode in a wreath of flame. Looks really, really cool, but man, does it suck. Uh, this will cause 25 burn damage if you're within the vicinity, and it'll make a loud-ass noise for people to hear. So to prevent this, you want to beat it down with a blunt instrument. Uh, the butt of your weapon, uh, assuming you don't have a bayonet attachment, the butt of your weapon will work in a pinch, but it will usually cost you all of your stamina, or most of your stamina. So bringing in the stamina-efficient and highly effective dusters will kill it in three heavy attacks, which is really good. Uh, a med kit. You literally, literally always want to bring in a med kit. Always equip a med kit because med kits will heal 50 health over six seconds, uh, down to three seconds with the physician trait and 100 health with the doctor trait. But more on that later. Uh, going on, going in the game without a med kit is a very, very bad idea, and I would never recommend this. Just don't do it. Uh, and finally, for your final tool slot, I'd recommend some form of AI clearing, such as fuses or a flare pistol. Uh, these, when you throw them at AI or shoot them at AI will cause it to burn and instantly be killed, and is a great way to deal with annoying AI such as Constantine Armids, which are very annoying, or Hives that you don't want to shoot because they're out of range. So definitely bring some in if you can. Or Throwing Knives, actually. Throwing Knives are great as well. So of those items, the only one that is non-negotiable is the medkit. You just bring it in always. Uh, the knife and dusters can be avoided by taking a weapon with the bayonet attachment, or a, a mace or brawler attachment, or they can even be condensed into one item in the form of a knuckle knife, which does both jobs, just not both as effectively, but it does do them both. Uh, for your consumables, you always want to bring in more vitality shots, at least personally, I always do. Uh, I preferably take in two big vitality shots, which will heal me to full, but until I have those unlocked, I will use three to four weak ones, which will do the trick if you don't have them. Uh, you want more heals because vitality shots heal a lot faster than medkits and they also heal 75 health with the weak ones or all of your health with the big ones and you might be thinking oh well geef why not bring in four vitality shots and just forgo medkits and that's because medkits are a tool and thus they can be replenished from toolboxes and from looting dead players vitality shots cannot and they can only be brought in with you so once you're comfortable with bringing in less heals definitely experiment with bringing in throwables such as dynamite or firebombs uh, Dynamite is a great way to flush out a player, with firebombs being a handy tool to burn down hunters, but also a good way to block off certain areas for a period of time, like a firebomb. Um, something to note, there is a difference between Dynamite and a frag bomb. Dynamite leaves a big cloud of smoke after it explodes, which can obstruct vision and allow you to do things like revive or cross cover. Uh, a frag bomb doesn't do the same. It leaves a very small puff of smoke and then it kind of dissipates. Also, Dynamite is capable of blowing up concertina wire or wooden doors off or uh, windows. Frag bombs cannot blow up concertina wire and they cannot blow off doors. Frag bombs are anti-personnel. Dynamite is anti-everything. <laughs> Dynamite is best described as anti-environment. Frag bombs are purely anti-personnel. That's why frag bombs apply a bleed to players, but Dynamite does not. Just a slight aside, I wanted to put that out there. Anyway. After that, all you've got to do is pick a primary weapon and a secondary weapon, and you're all set. So for someone just starting out, I would recommend just the basic Winfield rifle. Get comfortable with it. Get comfortable with how far you need to lead it. And just go in and shoot everything. Like, I know that sounds dumb, and yes, you'll attract players. And yes, you'll most likely get stomped. Don't go into your first game of hunt expecting to come out with, you know, 10 kills, because you probably won't. But... If you go in and shoot everything, you will learn how much noise you make. You will learn how far to lead your target at a range. And once you've got that down, you can go from there. It's going to take you a fair few games. But it, honestly, trial by fire in this game is the best way to do it. Just dive in and do it. If you're the player who prefers a more up-close and personal style of play, then I would suggest taking in the Romero shotgun. It's only got one shell before requiring a reload, but it's super powerful within 15 meters and it'll just kill someone. So you get close... 
you give someone some buckshot and you just you just murder them. Actually, I think it's 20 meters on Romero. I think it's 20 meters. On, no, I think it's 15. It's 15. Ignore me, it's 15. Just just end someone. Just end someone's entire existence. He's dead. So for your sidearm, uh, you won't have any options at the start other than your basic Nagant pistol, but that's okay. Because if you go in and use the Nagant pistol to kill things, you'll unlock the silence variant of it. Uh, this will give you a silence weapon to practice with when you go into games. And as I mentioned earlier, you have traits for your hunters. I won't explain them because thankfully traits are self-explanatory and what they do. You just hover over it, it tells you what it does. I don't need to go into them. But they can be purchased with hunter trait points. And at the end of the matches... Uh, or you can find them through little bone charms scattered around the map. Um, yeah, take a silence pistol, take your pistol in, shoot things, get a silence pistol. You should be fine. Anyway, traits, like I said, not going to go into. Don't need to go into them. You can find them around the game. They're self-explanatory. However, two traits I will touch on briefly because I highly recommend them are the aforementioned physician and doctor. A physician is unlocked pretty early, but doctor isn't until like much, much later. That being said, these two traits when used in conjunction with each other will provide a lot more healing efficiency, which is, you know, critical. Uh, to, so to, but to start with, aim for traits like Greyhound and Determination, which will allow you to sprint for longer and recover your stamina quicker. And I encourage that because you should be sprinting around the map. Speed is king. This is basically Apex, not really, but you need to be fast. You need to keep moving. So just keep moving. Don't be low and slow. Low and slow sounds effective, it sounds good, but you're not going to get bounties quickly. People will beat them to you, and people are just going to cap you if you're moving slowly. So always be moving. Uh, and if you're finding yourself on fire or you're bleeding a lot, I'd recommend picking up Bloodless and Salve Skin. That's about as much as I want to touch on traits, though. So Doctor, Physician, Greyhound, De Determination, Bloodless, Salve Skin. Uh, all of those are good. If you're playing with friends, Necromancer as well. Probably one of the best traits in the game. Completely undervalued at four points. It needs to be more, but whatever. So. Oh, I have deliberately left out a few mechanics. Such as Empowered Dark Sight uh, and the best way to kill bosses. Uh, hint, it's with melee. But I really, really believe that some things should just be found out on their own. Whilst I want to educate new players... I also don't want to totally take that sense of discovery away from you. You know, the beauty of Hunt is that it's got such a deep system full of nuance. And if I take that away from you, then you'll have no desire to explore and to learn and to figure things out for yourself. I highly encourage you to find a friend, dive into the bayou together, and experience this wonderfully underappreciated game. I tried... I really tried to write this guide to be as comprehensive as possible whilst still keeping some mystery about certain mechanics for you to figure out on your own. I've explained weapons, muzzle velocity, effective range, touched on traits which you might want, how to heal, blood bonds, legendary skins, all of that, all the essentials, all the building blocks for Hunt I have given to you in this video and I do my best to educate and explain the game to people because I really think Hunt has a bright future ahead of it and I'm more than happy to answer questions in the comments uh, or on the live stream if that's your thing if more people can be encouraged to take the plunge into the bayou that I get to pad my stats I mean I you get to experience this phenomenal game <laughs> yeah <clears throat> anyway I trust this has been helpful if I encouraged you to play this or a friend to play this in any way or if I've taught you something new please leave a like below or even better actually share this with a friend so they too can experience the elegant savagery of hunt my name is geef i'll see you in the bayou and if you kill me after watching this please let me know so i can hate myself i mean so i can feel like i've accomplished something cool cool peace i'll see you out there